Welcome back to Luke's Properties YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can get yourself a free house. I've also got a surprise for you at the end of the video, so make sure you watch it to the end. Let's get into it. How to get a free house. So you're going to go and find a £100,000 house, either in the north of England or over in Wales. We're talking about a very standard vanilla, typical two bedroom mid terraced house. It needs to be in a good rental area where there's local amenities, schools and good transport links. So this £100,000 house is going to cost you a £25,000 deposit, which you're going to need to save up. You could do this over a few years, or you could maybe joint venture with someone who has the money and you could find the opportunity and the property itself. And then you own half of the house each within a limited company or as tenants in common. Your next cost will be around £1,500 to a solicitor. Your next cost will be a mortgage broker. So you have to pay a mortgage broker to find you the best possible mortgage. You could try and walk into the bank and get a mortgage yourself. But in my experience, this can be quite difficult, quite time consuming. You're best off paying an expert who has access to the whole market and leveraging their skill set to find you the best deal possible. Your next cost will be stamp duty. Now, if you're investing in Wales where I invest, then stamp duty will be 4% of the purchase price if you already own a property. If you don't own a property, then you won't pay stamp duty. So it's going to be 4% of the purchase price in Wales and 3% in England. Now these costs, so your deposit, your solicitor cost, your mortgage broker cost, and your stamp duty cost is going to add up to a total of £31,000. So now you've bought the house and you've got the keys. The next step is to rent the property out. Now, a lot of people think you can't find a £100,000 house that's in good enough condition to be rented out as it is. I'm here to tell you that you can. I've done this quite a few times. I only generally buy houses that are in good condition. We call these properties turnkey properties or turnkey buy to let investments. It basically means the clues in the name, you turn the key and they're ready to be rented out. I might pay my paint and decorators to do a paint and decoration job in the house, or if I've got the time, I might even do it myself. So in terms of a refurbishment cost, I keep that very minimal, most of the time under 5,000 pounds. Sometimes I don't spend anything other than my own time and effort. So I'm going to go and find tenants for this property, which won't be very difficult. You advertise it, you market it properly on the correct platforms. And because of the supply and demand issue that we have in the UK at the moment and the lack of housing, you'll have no shortage of people who want to rent this property from you. If you've done your due diligence and you've invested in a good rental area. So you're going to rent this property out for £725 per month. Your mortgage on your £100,000 house will be a 75% loan to value buy to let mortgage which at 4.5% interest rate on an interest only mortgage, so you're only paying the interest, you're not paying the principal loan down, just the interest, that's gonna cost 281 pounds per month in monthly mortgage payments. You're also gonna to have to insure the property, so landlord insurance, that's gonna cost you around 30 pounds per month. It's always safe to put aside a budget for maintenance. So if things go wrong in the house or things break here and there, which does happen every now and again with housing, you're going to have put aside £50 per month to cover those costs, which will work out to be around £600 for the year. Hopefully you don't have to spend it, but if something comes up and you do need to invest back into the property, you've got that money set aside just in case. So after all of your costs, you're going to be left with a total of £364 per month in net passive income, which works out to be £4,368 per year in net passive income. Okay, so we've bought the house and we've rented it out. Now let's look at what happens as time goes on. So house prices are set to rise by 26.4% by 2028 in my investment area, which is Wales. And this forecast has been made by Savills, which is one of the biggest property companies in the UK. And they have all of the data in front of them. So I'm pretty sure it's quite accurate. So now this house is worth around 126,000 pounds and your equity within this house has gone from £25,000, which was your initial deposit, to £51,000. So your equity has grown over those four years. As the house price has increased, so has your equity. Equity being your chunk of the property, your capital that you've invested in. And your mortgage, because it's an interest-only mortgage, is still £75,000, the same as it was when you first bought the house. Because remember, you're only paying the interest, you're not paying the principal loan down. What's also happened over those four years is rents have increased by around 5% per year, which is quite reserved by the way. But let's work off those numbers of 5% per year. So that means your first year's rent was £4,368. Your year two rent was £4,586. Your rent from year three was £4,815. And your rent from year four was £5,055. 
So as you can see, rents have gradually increased by 5% each year, which has given you a total of £18,824 in net rental income over those four years. Now, depending on if you're a lower rate taxpayer or a higher rate taxpayer, and depending on whether you've bought this property in your own name or within a limited company, let's just say for argument's sake, you've bought it in a limited company, then you're going to pay around 20% corporation tax each year on your profits. So we're going to deduct that from your total rental income, which gives you a post corporation tax income of £15,060, which means after you've paid your tax, you're going to be left with £15,060 in net rental income. So because the house has increased in value significantly and interest rates have gone down, now would be a good time to refinance the property to the new value and try and withdraw some of that equity, which you could then use to go and buy another house. So let me show you how that's done. So you go back to your mortgage broker, you let them know that you think the house has increased in value and that you want them to go and find you a new loan to the new value of the house, which is now 126,000 pounds. Remember when you bought it, it was only worth 100,000 pounds. So you go and get a new mortgage against the property. You go and get a 75% loan to value mortgage, but now interest rates have gone down, which they do historically over time. At the moment of making this video, interest rates are around 4.5% on a typical buy to let property. And it's quite a fair assumption that in four years time, interest rates could quite easily be at around 3%. So you'd get a 75% loan to value mortgage based on the new value which means you'd qualify for a mortgage of £94,500, which is 75% of the new value. And if you borrowed that money at 3% interest, your interest payments would be £236 per month, which is actually cheaper than your initial mortgage four years prior, even though you're actually borrowing more. Because when you first bought the house, you were only borrowing around £75,000. This time round, your new mortgage is £94,500. So even though you're taking out more debt, it's actually costing you less money than it did four years ago. Now with this £94,500, what you're going to do is you can pay off the old mortgage, which will still be at £75,000 because remember, it's an interest only mortgage and you're not paying the principal loan down, just the interest. So you pay off the old mortgage, which means your money left over will be £19,500. Now this £19,500 is tax-free money because remember, in theory, it's a loan, it's debt and you don't pay tax on debt. So this is tax-free money that you get back into your account. Now this is where we put it all together. So remember, you received £15,060 in rental income over that four-year period after tax. And if you're smart and you didn't spend that money, you saved it, let's say you left it in your property company, you would then put that £15,060 with your £19,500 of tax-free money, you'd put that money together, which is your rent plus your appreciation, and that would give you a total of £34,560. Now remember, you only put £31,000 into the house initially, and four years later, you now have £34,560 back in your account. So at this point, you've got all of your initial capital invested back out of the house, plus you've made around £3,560 on top of that, you still get to keep the house and rent it out for passive income. So you still own the asset. Now, if you're really smart, rather than going and spending this on a fancy watch or a nice holiday or a brand new car, you'll use this money to go and buy another house and you would repeat the process. And that would mean you'd have two assets. You'll now be generating two times passive income and you'll be able to benefit from two times capital appreciation because you own two houses. This is how the wealthy intelligently leverage debt to grow and scale their net worth. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please remember to like and subscribe and feel free to comment in the comment section so we can continue the conversation. If you want to further your buy to let education, then I've included a free buy to let course in the video description below. So this is how you get a free house. I hope you've enjoyed this video and as always, I'll see you on the next one.